The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, its relevance, its impact, its ability to release transformational power, we are all God has in the earth. And our challenge in life is not who we are, but who we think we are not. The enemy never wants us to know how powerful we are in the earth. That God really did when he created us in Genesis 1, 26 and 28, when he says that I created you in my image, in my likeness, to be like me, to love like me, to care like me, to give like me, to transform like me, to stand in the gap like me. I have no other entity in the earth that is a mirror of me but you. So for you to fail and for you to abdicate your role and for you to keep silent, then the salt now loses its savor. And when the salt loses its savor, it's now henceforth good for nothing except to be trampled underfoot by men. Today, Cornerstone, I believe that not only are we in this church here, the salt of the earth, but I believe that in this coming year that we are now facing and all the things that we're seeing around the world, I believe that there's a move of God that's happening around the world where people have tried everything else and you see it happening in many different arenas where people are coming to church on Sunday morning and worshiping God all around the world and around this nation, realizing that the only hope we have is in Christ and Christ alone shout a big amen the Bible says in Isaiah 2 2 I love this and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills that word hills means represents governments legislations and it says and all of the nations all the ethnos all the people groups the ecclesia the assembly shall flow into it and notice that it says it shall be exalted above all the other hills, all the other governments. God has made it so that when he establishes something, that there is absolutely nothing else, no other entity in the world that can exalt itself above the ecclesia, above the church. It may look like that we're not on the forefront, but baby, let me tell you, we're on the forefront. Because at the end of the day, when they've tried everything else and everything else fails, at the end of the day, we still stay exalted above all the other philosophies, over all the other religions, over all the other, are you hearing me? Over all the other governments, Christ and Christ alone. Shout Christ and Christ alone. That is the confidence I have when I'm on the uh, ISIS border, when I'm in the middle of Congo where there's a war zone. That's the confidence I have when Haiti is in political unrest and they're saying do not go in. It's too dangerous to go in. The confidence I have is that God's word is established and his word will never fail. He said that he is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. What God has spoken, he'll make good. Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act I'm here to tell you that whatever you're believing for in your life today that the same God once you find it in the scripture once you find it in the word of God you might have came in here today suffering you might have came here today dealing with depression you may be sitting here today and you and your wife and husband and wife are trying to decide whether this marriage is going to go on any further you may have a child that grew up in church and they're no longer they're now trying to say that they're atheists baby ain't no real atheist Anybody that's an atheist just not have had their self backed up against the wall long enough to cry out to God. Somebody say amen. But God has established his word and once he's established his word, he does not change. He is an immutable God. His word is immutable. It's impossible for it to change. I love the way God has swag. In Chief Kachitamoto that you see there, in their culture, women have never been chiefs. So her father had 12 children. And out of 12 children with all these sons, he ended up with a little baby girl. And before the father died, he decided to make Chief Teresa Kachitimota the chief. And so the whole place was an outroar. How could a woman be a chief? It's impossible. It's never been done before. I'm here to tell you right now, God wants to do some suddenlies in your life. God wants to do some things in your life right now in the coming year that have never been done before. He wants somebody that would dare to believe him. When I was looking at that movie with Harriet Tubman, it's like it had never been done before. They said to Harriet, where is the team that you came up, the, 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 the Underground Railroad? She said, what team? 
He said, you, you came along? She says, me and my God. Turn to your neighbor and say, me and my God. I remember one time when we were in Haiti and they had these thugs, you know, these gang thugs, and they started putting word out, tell Dr. Bailey she can't come back unless she pay us. And what we gonna do to her when we see her? And we gonna take her out and we gonna do this, we gonna do that. And so we went in and so the team was telling me, I mean, the, my, my local team there, they said, now Doc, now we know you decided to come, but they said, please don't go on the other side of the river because that's where they are. I said, let me tell you something. The word of God says in Psalm 24, verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I said, who are they to tell me where I can go on my God's earth? And then, and so then we, 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 we did the clinics and everything that we do. And then I wanted to go to the other side of the market so we can take our doctors over there so the doctors can see what kind of food they're eating and see the water source that the pigs and goats and everything are, you know, everything is all in the same water. And sure enough, coming out of the market, as I'm walking down, here comes the thugs in his game. Something in my head just, just, you know they got this show called Snapped? Anybody seen it? I just snapped. And I'm only five feet tall with these little few heels on, you know? And I, before I knew it, I was jumping up in the guy's face, you know, just jumping up in his face and saying, shame on you, shame on you. Your mother would be shame of you. I said, you ought to be shame of yourself telling me I can't come over here. I, just like a mother. I said, listen, where, where, where were you and where, were, where was your gang when the earthquake happened and you all didn't have food? And you didn't know about it. Every year we've come with doctors. Every year we've come to help you. Without fail, we gave our word. And I just kept saying, shame on you. You ought to be shame of yourself. Don't you sit up here talking about I can't come. Shame on you. I said, now you come on here with me right now. And the rest of your team, rest of y'all just come on here right now. We got a couple of this bad work to do. Next thing you know, they just came walking with me. And right now, they are our security. <laughs> They're our security. It's the same guys you all see that are out there. Don't you tell me what my God won't do through you. Don't you tell me what my God won't do through. Listen to me. There are laws that are waiting to be legislated by you. There are laws that are waiting to be enforced by you. You're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. When Mordecai went to Esther, he had to knock on her door because, you know, she got stuck on stupid a little bit. Her weave was tied too tight, you know. And so he had to go in there and just say, listen, 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 listen. You up in the palace sleeping on Persian sheets and being fanned and everything. But how do you not know that the father has not allowed you to be in the kingdom for such a time as this? After she went and got along with God and got her perspective right again, because sometimes we get stuck on stupid. Sometimes we get stuck on stuff. Sometimes you think you got yourself that job and you got yourself that promotion and you got yourself that house. Sometimes you think that's your money and your body and your will. Your life is not your own. You've been purchased. You've been redeemed. You've been bought by the blood of the lamb. And this morning, some of you were baptized by, are you hearing me, baptized in water. And so she began to realize that this was not about her. When she came back with the resolve, if I perish, let me perish. But then she went on and she didn't stop there. She went on in the eighth chapter to, to legislate laws. She'd gone before the king the first time, but she went back before the king again to get laws legislated so that her people will have an opportunity to bear arms and be protected. But you see, the laws were waiting on Esther to step to the plate and say, enough is enough. Turn to your neighbor and say, enough is enough. When we were in Malawi, and we were out in this huge soccer field, myself and my friend, Dr. Pearl Coupe, and so the soccer field was full of wid widows, just as far as you guys can see, and they don't have clean water, so you all have seen us bring the, the water filter before, and we brought in that water filter that takes, excretiates cholera, typhoid out of the water. It, is, it takes out uh, human feces, animal feces, taste and odor. It doesn't require any solar panel, no electricity, and it lasts for 10 years, and they can do 150 gallons a day. And so we gave that to them as a gift. We were gifting them, and we showed them that this is what we'll be able to have and that you can bag up the water and sell the water and when I was out there amongst those widows they started dancing and singing and praising and, and when I was there out in that open field I just looked up into the heavens and I was so overwhelmed with joy and I was like Lord this is why we've been created to care about what you care about to make an impact and a difference in the world we were not called just to come to church on Sunday morning and get our praise on only and leave out of here and be centered around our own needs how many of you this morning brought someone to church with you how many of you do the midweek service bring somebody with you when is your faith and your walk going to extend and go beyond what God can do for you when is it going to spill over and impact the lives of others I'm here to tell you that you are a city set on a hill you are the salt of the earth you are all that God has your life was never designed to be centered around you and you only God called you to something that's bigger than you
the impact on the inside of you, you have a greater reach than you could ever imagine. So when we were out there ministering to all these widows, I felt the presence of God. Kathy, Pastor Kathy, I felt the presence of God. And I was like, Lord, this is what you mean when you said in your word, we are workmanship created in your Christ Jesus. This is what you meant when you said that we are co-laborers together with you. This is what you meant in your word when you said, Almighty God, that Christ in us, the hope of glory. Colossians 1 verse 27. This is what you meant and said in your word that we are ambassadors of you. We're an extension of you. We're the mirror of you. We're the embodiment of you. We are all that you have. And as those widows begin to dance and worship and they go, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'm out there dancing with them. Yes, I got my dance on right there with them. And I just begin to feel the presence of God because I could feel God loving them through me. I could feel God touching them through me as they begin to tell their stories one by one in the, in the country there as I said when the when the widow dies when the husband dies the brothers come in one by one and there was this one particular one the brothers were having their way and she wanted out and we said these laws must be re-legislated uh, chief Kachitamoto her father made her the chief and women are, women are not chiefs and the brothers were mad and and the men have come after him and they've threatened her life so many times and this is what she tells them she says when they come to threaten her and come to kill her she said, you, you see, you, you cannot kill me until I finish my mission. After I have finished my mission, then you can kill me. And then after my mission is over, I will go and be in the loving arms of my Jesus and you, you will go straight to hell. Her name literally means translated, don't mess with fire. Don't you tell me that God don't have some swag up in him. Her name, like, don't mess with me. Don't you mess with fire. So she's a little five-foot woman. When you go on the website, man, when you go on, on YouTube, you'll see her speaking at the UN. You'll see her on BBC, CNN. And she's saying, this is my mission in life. So we're joining with her and with, with uh, Dr. Pearl Coupe, who was the one who brought me into this initiative, to get the laws legislated because it's not enough just to rescue the girls and get the girls out. It's not enough for just them to be able to go to school. But we want the laws changed. There are some laws that are now being instituted in our nation that are coming up under the radar where they're trying to change the way our children think they're trying to change the order of the way God made family they're trying to take young children at the age of three and four years old and legislate laws that they can make decisions about their body parts at three years old without the consent of a mother and a father they're all kind of laws that are being legislated that are wicked and ungodly laws well I'm here to tell you that God is opening up the eyes of his people and we are saying that enough is enough we recognize that we are the governing body of God in the earth and we will not sit back and let heathen, ungodly men legislate laws that years down the road our children will suffer. Years down the road, are you hearing me? We say that our nation is coming back to God like never before. This nation was founded on the principles of the Bible. This nation was founded in Jesus Christ being Lord over this nation and we exalt the Bible over this nation, not any political party. We exalt Jesus over America. Say amen someone. And not just Jesus over America but Jesus over the whole world shout amen. amen and so it's not enough just to legislate those but she's getting the laws we legislated even for those young girls that she has nullified 890 marriages well you can imagine the men really come after her to try to take her life because she's taking their bride and and then and some of them have, been, have had children already but once they've taken out then here this is where God is dealing with us you see, God made a covenant with Abraham. In Genesis 12, 1 through 3, pay close attention to this. It is a stewardship covenant. He said, through you, all the families of the earth shall be empowered to prosper. How in the world are we going to take care of these young girls? How are we going to build uh, 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 boarding houses for them? How are we going to build schools in Haiti? How are we going to provide clean water? How are we going to do these type of things if we still got a money problem? We still haven't learned how to trust God with 10 cents out of a dollar. God said to Abraham, let me make this very clear, Abraham. In the 15th chapter of Genesis, he said, I will be your exceeding and great reward. He says in the 12th chapter of Abraham, pay close attention, it's a stewardship covenant. He says, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those that curse you. He says, through you, through you. All the family, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place right now. Through you, all the families of the earth are going to be empowered to prosper. Well, in order for us to empower,
empower other people to prosper, for other people to be blessed, we must first be blessed ourselves. Are you hearing me? You can't give what you don't have. You can't take people where you haven't gone. So God says, let's settle this up front coming out of the gate. I am blessing you. You are blessed. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. Are you hearing me? You're the head. You are not the tail. You are above and not beneath. I will supply all of your need according to our riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I take pleasure in taking care of you. The song you all sang this morning, you all said, he, my life, he holds my life in his hands. God will take care of you. The righteous have never been forsaken nor the seed ever begging for bread. God says, I need you to understand this. Nehemiah 8 and 10. Eat the fat, drink the sweet. Remember to reserve a portion for those to whom nothing has been prepared. And then we will say that the joy of the Lord is our strength. God says to Abraham, I don't mind if you bling bling baby, but just make sure you take care of those to whom nothing has been prepared. God is calling us into a partnership with him. He says, if you take care of my business, I'll take care of yours. Are you hearing me? God is going to make sure that you're never forsaken. God's going to make sure that you don't end up on the short end of the stick. Why? I got an inside scoop. The reason why God's going to make sure that you're taken care of and your needs are met. Would you like to know what your guarantee is? You're all he has. Our government, when we send men to war, when we send men to battle, when we send men, when men sign up and women sign up in the military, they don't go make their own uniforms. They don't go negotiate for their weapons. They don't have to worry about when they're, especially going to boot camp, they don't have to worry about their medical, they don't have to worry about what they say, because our nation says, we're taking care of you so that you can take care of the nation. Well, if we can trust a secular system to take care of its own, why not trust the most high God, the creator of heaven and earth? God wants to bless you. We are blessed to be a blessing. And while I'm out here, we're now coming up on a time of the year that we set apart to begin to give thanks unto God which it should not just be during this time of the year. Throughout your whole life, the Bible says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You may not be driving the car you want to drive, but baby, you got some wheels. You may not be living in the house you want to live in, but you got a roof over your head. Are you hearing me? When I go to these different nations, I just want to take a group of Americans with me sometime, and sometimes I just want to pass the Meredith, just let them stay with me, just, just leave them over here for a good three or four days. Are you hearing me? Let them get a real revelation where people are, the water that they're using, uh, feces, and animal feces and there's no access to clean water and we just take clean water for granted no electricity we take electricity for granted are you hearing me you complaining about the fact that you don't have this and you don't have that and you haven't got the promotion don't you know that promotion don't come from the east or the west but promotion comes from God when you start taking care of his business when you begin to show God that you can be trusted with stewardship to care about what he cares about look at what he did in the life of Moses Moses was just like Esther sitting up in that palace are you hearing me where everything all taken care of him and for a moment Moses just like Esther had forgotten what the purpose was he had forgotten what he where he why he was in the palace he had forgotten where he came from and so he had everything he riding around racing chariots you know with Pharaoh's son you know and just 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 living a life living a life bling bling and you know and then God has a way he knows the combination to your heart and God says come here he now starts dealing with Moses heart because he wants Moses to feel what he feels, see what he sees and know what he knows. And so Moses sees an Egyptian that's, that's abusing a Hebrew. And see, this is how you know when you're connected to your purpose. Whatever angers you, whatever frustrates you, whatever rises up on the inside of you. May I pause right here? If you've gotten to a place that nothing angers you, nothing frustrates you, then your salt has lost its savor. But I'm here to reconnect you with the very pulse of Almighty God. When, we, when I first learned about these child brides, I said, God, there's no way the way I am as a grandmother, you know how we are as grandmothers, and I'm looking at my grandmother baby and she's 10 years old and I'm saying to myself if some joker came and tried to take my come on now I'll be having to kill them and tell God they died but then repent after it's over are y'all hearing me I said Lord there is no way are you hearing me the righteous anger of Almighty God rose up on the inside of me and this is what God wanted Moses to see I don't want you to look at that video and just shake your head I don't want you to look at that video and just cry a little bit I want you to have a righteous indignation that rises up on 
on the inside of you and you hate what I hate, you love what I love, but then you're called to action because he left Moses at a place. Moses didn't just get angered. Moses actually did something. God began to engage him. I said when I was there, I am not going to be at peace. And I saw that with Harriet Tubman's movie. She said, as long as there are slaves still there, she said, I could have saved a whole lot more slaves if they knew they were slaves. She said, as long as they're back there suffering and I'm up here and I'm free, she says, I'm willing to give my life and do whatever I do to save as many as I can save. I said, that's a great commission assignment. We ought to say, as long as they're out there on crack, as long as they're questioned about their identity, as long as they're tormented in their minds, as long as they're battling with depression, as long as they're looking for love in all the wrong places, as long as they're going to fortune tellers and soothsayers and readers, then we're not going to be satisfied with the liberty that we have and the freedom that we have until we go out and make someone else free. For whom the Son is made free is free indeed. Shout amen, somebody. I said, I'm not going to be just, look at this. I, this is what God wants our heart to do. Look at that 10-year-old like it's your 10-year-old. Look at that widow like it's your widow. Because that's what he did with us. The Bible says he saw us in our state. The Bible says the lamb was slain before the foundation. The tribunal of heaven had to meet and say, son, you're going to have to go down and rescue man out of this. He sent his son. He came from heaven to earth. There was no other way that man can get himself out of the mess that we had got ourselves in. So Jesus identified. Are you hearing me? He became, he became touched by the feelings of our infirmities. And he identified. The Bible says when we were alienated, when we were absolutely stuck on somewhere on a nightclub till I back up to my bumper baby acting crazy Jesus said that's all right I'm coming for you that's all right I'm coming for you and the same way he came for us we must go to others John 20 21 so as the father sent him he said so send I you who are you sent to this morning who are you sent to this morning Moses now, he begins to realize that there's something that's much bigger than the palace. There's something going on inside of me that's much bigger than the pleasures and the luxuries that I have. And then God just keeps reeling him in closer and closer. God just keeps drawing him in more and more and more. And then next thing you know, Moses not satisfied in the palace. Now all of a sudden he's not satisfied with just his needs being met. See, in your walk, thank God for where you are and thank God for where you've been. But I came to Cornerstone today to tell you God wants to take you to another place. Thank God for the commitment level that you've had. But God says in this coming year and where you are right now, I want to draw you into another place of intimacy. I want to take you into a higher place of commitment. I want to bring you to the place where you love what I love and hate what I hate. And not just hate it, but you are engaged in action, a call of action to do something about it. God says that's where I want to bring you. Are you hearing me? So then in Exodus, the third chapter, the 7th through the 11th verse, Mo God now called Moses aside and he says come now and he says to Moses my eyes have seen the oppression of my people my ears have heard their cry and I know their sorrow he's talking to Moses and he now says to Moses I'm coming down they're having this conversation and God says to Moses I'm coming down and then next thing you know you see God coming down by sending Moses if God is the same yesterday today and forever and he is then God wants to come down in our nation God wants to come down in the nations of the earth God wants to come down in the lives of the child brides God wants to come down in the lives of these widows can you imagine a widow that once your husband is dead and you have no one to defend you the brothers are coming in and having their way with you and then the family members take everything you have and you and your children are left with nothing God wants to come down can you imagine a 10 year old little girl that dreams of becoming something in life and wants to become she has dreams of what she wants to become and she's snatched from her and she's forced into a marriage at 10 and 12 years old. Can you imagine that the little body parts are so undeveloped that when they try to give birth, it just tears, it just messes them up. God wants to come down. Can you imagine our children in the school system are being forced to believe something that's contrary to the Bible, that's contrary to nature, that's contrary to God's plan? God wants to come down. Are you hearing me? God wants to come down. I forgot to look at the clock. Okay, there it is. I hope that's the clock. What clock am I supposed to look at? Does that mean 11 minutes and 46 seconds left? Or does that mean it's 11.40? Okay, good. you got to help me. I help a sister out. Math wasn't my, my number one subject, okay? So listen. God says to Moses, I want to come down. 
I want to come down. Remember when Jesus, uh, the woman was caught in adultery. And it's so interesting. She wasn't caught masturbating. It was adultery, so it took two. But they only had the woman there. But that's another sermon. And Jesus comes down and starts riding in the dirt. The Messiah touches dirt. The Messiah touches dirt. The Messiah comes down. And he starts writing in the dirt. And then we don't know what he was writing. He might have started writing the names of all the men that she slept with. But all we know is one by one, they did that Pentecostal, excuse me. <laughs> Are you hearing me? One by one. And then Jesus says to her, where? Neither do I accuse you. There's so many people that think God is mad at them. They're living in a life where the accuser of the brethren has condemned them. And the only way they will know that God is not mad with them and that God is not accusing them. For the Son of Man came not into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world may be saved. I'm trying to get you to hear through my words this morning that you are God's ecclesia. You are God's ambassador. You are his salt in the earth. The Bible says in Matthew 18, 18, if you can put that up on the amplified version, he says, this is how much God thinks of us. This is how much God backs us. And in that account with Moses, God came down through Moses in delivering the children of Israel. And as he took him before Pharaoh, he says, Lord, who shall I say has sent me? He says, when you go before that joker, this is the Ebonics version. He said, you tell him. You know, I told you God got swag. I am that I am. I am what? I am whatever you need me to be. I want you to take a moment right now. We're not going to wait to what they call Thanksgiving. I want you to stand up on your feet right now and call him the I am to whatever you need him to be. I am the one that covers your mortgage. I am the one that heals your body. I am the one that will redeem your child. I am the one that will give you peace of mind. Put on the other side of the I am. I am your provider. I am your protector. I am your redeemer. Whatever you need him to be right now, I want you to begin to proclaim him as that in your life shout I am, I am. shout he is. he is and declare when you do it this time whatever you need him to be one two three he is, he is. again say what it is you need him to be he is, he is. whatever you need him to be he is. he is whatever you need him to be he is, he is. look at this in Matthew he says this to us in 18 18 what you allow I will allow I assure you most solemnly and say to you, whatever you bind and forbid and declare to be improper, it is improper for a 10-year-old to be forced into marriage. Whatever you declare to be improper and unlawful on earth shall have already been bound in heaven. God says, I went ahead of you on this one. And whatever you loose and permit and decree to be lawful on earth shall have already been loosed in heaven. When Daniel began to relegislate the law that I'm not going to bow down to a graven image to Nebuchadnezzar. When Esther began to relegislate the law, are you hearing me? God is saying the law had already been legislated in heaven. So I'm here to tell you, you're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. There are laws are waiting for you to pronounce. This is the year of the open mouth. Are you hearing me? Of the, to get to open and proclaim and say that it is improper. It is unlawful. It is unacceptable. Begin to open up your mouth and cry aloud and spare not. We are not going to sit and suffer in silence. We're not going to be backed up against the wall like we some kind of intimidated little weak mamby pamby people. But we recognize that we are the ecclesia of the earth and what God has called us to is exalted above every other government above every other philosophy. And so we are the ones that are proclaiming what he wants in the earth. We are the Esther of today. We are the Daniel of today. Are you hearing me? We are the Moses of the day. We are the Harriet of today. And we say that enough is enough. We say Father God you can come down through sending us come down through me father feel through me touch through me love through me think through me rescue through me ministers I want you to begin to play I decree in the name of Jesus that in Isaiah 46 verse 10 God says declaring the end from the beginning and the, from the ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all of my pleasure the Bible says that Psalm 67 5 and 6 let the people praise the O God let the people praise and give thanks unto me. Then as they begin to praise me, as they begin to make declarations, then shall the earth yield her increase. That means that 
the earth is groaning and waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God the Bible does not say that the earth is waiting on God the Bible says that the earth is waiting on the sons of God the Bible says that the earth is waiting on the sons of God the Bible says that the earth is waiting on the sons of God the Bible says that the earth is waiting on the sons of God they're not only waiting on the sons of God in Malawi they're not only waiting on the sons of God in Eswatini they're waiting on the sons of God in Ohio they're waiting on the sons of God on Capitol Hill they're waiting on the sons of God in South Africa they're waiting on the sons of God are you hearing me in the school system they're waiting on the sons of God in the penal system are you hearing me they're waiting on the sons of God they're waiting on the sons of God he says in Isaiah 46 verse 10 excuse me Psalm 67 5 and 6 let the people praise me O God praise thee O God let the people praise thee then shall the earth yield her increase and God even our own God he shall bless us if you want a promotion and you want increase in your life and you've been robbing Peter to pay Paul and you've been trying to go to school online and make yourself more marketable and you've been trying to figure out how you can get your debt uh, uh, eradicated and you're trying to figure out how you're going to make ends meet well I'm here to tell you that God came up with a formula God came up with a plan God says in this divine partnership this is what I'll do as you begin to give thanks unto me as you begin to praise me as you begin to give thanks unto me and as you begin to praise me and when you allow your heart to be transformed into the heart and care about what I care he says to Moses my eyes have seen so God is looking for somebody that will see what he sees he said my ears have heard that means God is looking for somebody that will hear what he hears and he says I know their sorrow that means God is looking for somebody that will be willing to know what he knows and pay attention to what he pays attention to but when you're wrapped up all in yourself and you think that it's all about you and your bills being paid and your needs needs being met then you're short-circuiting the assignment of God in your life are you hearing me I'm challenging you to embrace your assignment. I'm challenging you to embrace what he embraced. I'm challenging you to see what he sees. I'm challenging you to hear what he hears. I'm challenging you to love what he loves. I'm challenging you that when you look at situations and circumstances that are going on around the world and even in this nation, that you do not avert your eyes and you do not turn a deaf ear and you do not shake your head, but you begin to allow something to rise up on the inside of you like that that rose up on the inside of Moses, that you begin to say just like Esther, you begin to say if I perish let me perish you begin to say enough is enough you begin to recognize it's for this reason that I'm in the kingdom of God it's this reason why I'm in the kingdom of God if you stop and think about it for a moment how is it that we were born in this nation you didn't get to choose what nation you were born in you didn't get to choose the parents you were born to you didn't get to choose your gender you didn't get to choose your age you didn't get to choose when you were born God chose you and God appointed you God appointed you you know why God appointed you listen to this listen to this God has to have somebody to funnel his blessings through. God has to have somebody that's going to be his distribution center. So God is looking for somebody that would be like a Moses. Say, if I get it to you, can I get it through you? If I begin to bless you, will you remember what the blessing is for? If I give you the promotion, will you not spend all the money on yourself? When I begin to increase you, when I fill your vast, when I begin to meet every need that you've asked, when I begin to bless you till it overflows, will you begin to understand that I'm the Lord thy God that gave you the power to get the wealth that you have? Remember me, saith God. Don't forget me when I bless you. Don't forget the purpose of the blessing. I want you to take a moment right now and begin to take a small glimpse down memory lane. I want you to remember when you had to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches without the bread. I want you to remember when you had Kool-Aid without the Kool-Aid and it was sugar water. I want you to remember when you had, are you hearing me? When, when everything wasn't like it is right now. I remember, I want you to remember the days that you were looking out the window, scared that the snatch man gonna come and take the car. I want you to remember the times when you didn't have a job and you're trying to remember how the rent is gonna be paid and all of a sudden God spoke to somebody in what seemed like the 25th hour. I want you to remember when you were in that doctor's office and he gave you that negative report and he says that this is incurable and they said that there's no way and God came in and showed up and showed out God says when I show up for you and when I bless you and when I stand up for you I'm asking you to stand up for me I'm asking you to remember me I'm asking you to care about what I care about I'm asking you to see what I see I'm asking you to know what I know I'm asking you to hear what I hear I want your heart to pass for what my heart pants for 
for this is our God, for he is our God. Now let's begin to bless his name. Let's begin to bless his name for the fruit, the yield, the, the field will begin to yield this increase. Increase is yielding in your life right now. Increase is coming right now. And as you begin to get the increase, God says, remember me. When you get the increase, remember me that I'm the Lord thy God that gave you the power to obtain the wealth that you have. I'm the Lord thy God that calls you to be in a school that you did not qualify for, to live in a house you didn't qualify for, to have a wife you didn't qualify for. I'm the God that gave you a second chance. I'm the God that caused the judge to pardon you. I'm the God that brought you up off the sickbed. I'm the God that started with this ministry right here with a handful of people. And now we have campuses all around. Now we have a bishop that can be in another nation while you all are holding down the fort. God says, remember me and care about what I care about. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Can we begin to thank him right now? We're not waiting till the end of the month. Can we begin to thank him right now? Can we begin to thank him right now? Thank him for what he's done. Thank him for how good he's been to us. Thank him for how he's blessed us. Thank him for how he's blessed us. Let the people praise Him. Let the people praise Him. We won't be silent. We won't be silent. Let the people praise Him. Let the people praise Him. We won't be silent. We won't be silent. Come on, let the people thank him. Let the people thank him. I can't hear you, Cornerstone, up in the balcony. I can't hear you. The people thank him. We won't be silent. We won't be silent. Let the people thank him. Say, let the people thank him. Let the people thank him. We won't be silent. We won't be silent. No, we won't. Yeah, we won't be silent. Let the people thank him. Say, let the people praise him. Let the people praise him. I believe right now things are happening in the realm of the spirit. Yeah, yeah. Not just in your own life right now. Transformation is taking place. Things are shifting. They're shifting. They're shifting. They're shifting not just in this nation, but they're shifting in this church. They're shifting in the nations of the earth. They're shifting in the boardrooms, in the courtrooms. They're shifting. The enemy thought we were going to go one way as a nation, but God is turning around. God is turning us around. God is turning it around. Somebody believe with me. God is turning it around. God is turning around. We've been translated out of darkness and brought into his marvelous light. As I hand the mic over, I want you to remember this. The bottom line to this message this morning in our assignment is that we have been blessed to be a blessing. Have we been blessed, church? I said, have we been blessed? Can I ask you another question? Has he been faithful? Yeah. Has he provided for us? Yeah. Has he protected us? Yeah. Where there's so many three-fourths of the world do not know who he is. There's so many widows that have no one to defend them and no one to protect them. Not just the child brides, but there's so many people around the world that don't know him. Will you make a conscious effort and decision today that as you have known him, you will make him known? Yeah. Would you do that today? Would you do that today? And would you begin to understand when you go home and I want you to, when you get home, to just take a look around. I want you to go in the kitchen and I want you to turn the tap on and just for about a few seconds let the water run and while the water's running say Lord I thank you yeah. we act like we're supposed to have clean and running water like we're entitled to it this may seem a little rough and raw but when you get ready to go to the toilet and you close the door and you get a chance to flush the toilet that you don't have to go in some kind of bush yeah. to go to the toilet. And tonight before you go to bed or when you walk in the house and you put the key in the door, 
First of all, that you got a door to put the key in. First of all, you got a house to go to. And you turn on the light and just stop for a moment and say, Lord, thank you for light. Yeah. Is anybody hearing me today? Yeah. And then you start remembering where he brought you from and that you are all he has. And he wanted your life to be an example to those who don't know him so that you can share what he's done for you and you now become his distribution center. And you're able to say, what he did for me, he will do it for you. And when God knocks on the door of your heart, when he's asking you to do anything with him, not for him, with him, because we're co-laborers together with him. He was asking Moses to do that with him. He was asking Esther to do that with him. He was asking Daniel to do that with him. When he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock, he wasn't talking to the unbeliever, he was talking to the church. How can God be outside the door of his own church trying to get in? Wow. He's knocking this morning. He's knocking at your heart this morning. And I believe that we're shifting to another place. We are changing and re-legislating laws for generations to come. Are you hearing me? Somebody shout amen with me. I believe that God is going to start causing businesses to be blessed. God's going to start calling, causing uh, uh, debts to be canceled. God's going to start opening up supernatural doors for you. And there's going to be a great acceleration of wealth and increase in your household. And God is looking for your stewardship. God is looking for your faithfulness on 10 cents on the dollar. Don't shout me down when I said that. And as God starts seeing your stewardship with where you are right now, you're going to be proving to God, Father, you can trust me. You can trust me. We're going to go out there and turn everything over now. And you know what we normally do when we come here. We have a couple of hundred dollars worth of products. This one is called Financial Transformation Institute. And this one has been designed to literally be in a classroom setting. Just to come home, plug the flash drive in, and dealing with your credit, your uh, starting businesses, entrepreneurship, uh, debt forgiveness, negotiating payoffs, uh, real estate, so many different things, different streams of income, residual income, so that you can get your finances transformed. Because I believe that many people would give more if they had more. Am I talking to somebody today? And all those courses, the Financial Transformation Institute, what we're asking you to do in exchange with the flash drive that you purchase. For 80 little dollars, those girls that you saw, Mom, Chief Kachinimoto, is saying, I need to send them to school. Your little $80 that may not seem little to you because it may be a big sacrifice for all the materials that you're getting will help us send another little girl to school and rescue them out of the life of tyranny and out of a life of oppression and give them an opportunity to not only know the same God that we know, but have the liberty and live the kind of life that we live. Can you give a shout unto the Lord? Amen. We'll meet you at the table. God bless you. Come on, let's let Dr. Bailey know how much we appreciate her, how grateful we are for her sharing with us this morning. And let's thank God for the work that he is doing with her and through her all throughout the world. Come on, let's thank God that he has sent a mountain mover like that into our generation today. You know, we've been speaking and believing that we are gonna see mountains fall, that we are gonna see things that seemed immovable, things that seemed impenetrable, that we're gonna see them fall in our generation. And I believe they happen through work like what Dr. Bailey is doing. And Dr. Bailey, we just speak over the work that you're doing, the word that God gave us, which is that every mountain that seemed like it would never fall is gonna fall. And every mountain that is made into a plain is gonna turn into a field. And we believe that you are gonna harvest so many good things out of the mountains that you are attacking in the season to come. Amen, church. If you believe that, why don't we just commit to praying for her, commit to supporting her. And I love how the Holy Spirit works because we didn't tell her that we have been leaning into the founding scripture of this church, which is Isaiah 2 and 2, that the mountain of the Lord's house would be exalted. 
Amen. That the mountain of the Lord's house would be exalted. And we believe that our strategy for seeing every other mountain come down is when we see the mountain of the Lord's house exalted. So before we leave today, I just want to remind you of those things that God gave us. We have gathered together today as one of the ways that we'll see the mountain of the Lord's house exalted. I wanna encourage you to study the word that she brought us today. Dig into the life of Moses. Dig in to the life of Esther in the coming days to commit to fellowship. When you leave here today, invite somebody out to lunch. Invite somebody over. Make a new relationship. You have a whole list of new prayer points because the mountain of the Lord's house is exalted when we pray. Pray for her ministry. Pray for the works that she's doing. Pray for all of the things that were revealed to you today that are still going on. And we are going to commit today to our sacrificial giving because mountains like that don't come down without resources. And God has every resource that we need available to his people. She said today, we are distribution centers. So we're gonna commit to sacrificial giving. Right now we have the opportunity, if you text to give or if you give through the app, I wanna encourage you to grab your phone and think about something that's not an afterthought, that's not a leftover gift. You can be seated right where you are as we give, but something that is a sacrificial giving. Phil and I are gonna give $100 to make sure that we see mountains are moved. Some of you can give that, some of you can give more than that. Some of you, that's still a huge stretch for you. And Dr. Bailey encouraged us to look back at times that were thinner. I want to encourage you even beyond that. The first time I ever committed to sponsoring a child ongoing was in some of the thinnest times in my life. And it's when God revealed to me his generosity is the key to our prosperity. That giving into someone else's. Because even when my times were as thin as I had ever seen them. I was able to look around and say, I still have so much more. So don't disqualify yourself today. Don't count yourself out because you say, I'm still eating peanut butter jelly sandwiches right now. Guess what? There is someone who would literally beat someone else up for that peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So commit to stretching yourself as we give today. And we are going to see every mountain come down. If you give through cash or check, you can walk it forward as we continue in worshiping God. God, we thank you for Dr. Patricia Bailey. We thank you for your faithfulness in her life, for your provision, for your protection over her. And we speak favor over her life. We speak open doors. We speak that everything that she touches, God, would flourish. And we ask you to take our gifts today and do with them what only you can do, to multiply them exceedingly, abundantly more, God. Let our $100 be $1,000 in, in its effectiveness, in its stretch, in its reach. And we celebrate right now the harvests that are coming from these mountains that must come down. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. If you're giving through a digital version, go ahead and do that right now. If you want to bring your gift forward, you're welcome to walk and bring it this way as we continue in our worship.
There's a place for me on the time.